What is up guys? So today we are reviewing this 2023 Hyundai Ioniq Limited. And I am really excited to review this car for you guys because, um, I don't know, I think this is a really compelling electric vehicle. And I haven't reviewed that many electric cars, but when this one came out, I was like, honestly, oh look, another one just drove by. I was like, honestly, if I see an electric car, I'd probably get this. I haven't driven it yet though, but on paper, this is what I get. I think this is kind of like the best value electric car you can get right now. Uh, let's start off with the front. Special thank you to All Star Hyundai for letting me review their Ionic 5. Honestly, they are so nice in here. Like, everybody is really chill. All the workers are really nice. Honestly, I really like reviewing cars at this dealership. So, a special shout out to the team at All Star Hyundai. Thank you guys so much. Now, let's get into the video. Now, you might notice these little LED light lines are in this grill, whatever you call it, the silver trim right here. Honestly, I think this looks really good. You can only get this on the limited trip, and I really like that Hyundai does that. They did something similar with the Hyundai Palisade that I reviewed with the rear lights that have these lines. And I like that Hyundai's doing that. They really some bold design moves, and I think this is a good bold design move. It's not something ugly. And I like how this also isn't that ugly EV. You know, this isn't like... Not to talk smack about Tesla, but this isn't like Tesla where it has the ugly front design. This, this actually has like the uh, um, cool little black thing right here. Like this design just flows together really well. It's like an art piece. Like you got the front camera right here. Oh, uh, we can get it interrupted by that one. But let's talk about the headlights right here. Full LED headlights are standard on every vehicle, but since this is the limited trim, you get these special pixelated headlights. Do you guys see how, all the pixels in them? Let's bring you all over to this headlight to show you guys. Do you see all the pixels in here? Honestly, I think this one's really cool. It's all like QB and stuff. And then down here, you can tell this is the limited because you get these little lines right here, which I think it looks really good. This is a great way to bring the design of the car, make it more interesting without having to add some big growth. Like I feel like a lot of car manufacturers don't know how to design a car. Like, oh, let's just make it more interesting by like, using some big growth. And I like all the silver accents you get up front and you get the front parking sensor right here. I think the front parking sensors come on the SCL models of the Limited. So that's how you know somebody has a, oh wait, no, front parking sensors come on every model, I think, except the base model. So if you see somebody at the Ionic 5 and they don't have front parking sensors, you know they got the cheap model. Let's get on to the rest of them. Now let's look at the wheels. These are the wheels that you can only get on the limited trim. And honestly, I'm actually obsessed with these wheels. I think these are some of the best looking wheels of modern 2023 cars. And I think they just look really good, this design. It reminds me of wheels from the 90s, like wheels on a Chrysler town in the country from the 90s. I know it's a random car, but just with the way the spokes are, honestly, I'm glad that we're using the wheels like these back and trim again. Looking up here, you get all these little like lines, whatever these are for to make it look more aerodynamic. I don't know, people always, when they design an electric car, they always do some random little details to it. And I kind of like it. Now, do you notice this paint? It's matte finish. This is a, a glossy paint. Um, and I think you can get a matte finish paint on every single model. And I don't think it costs extra. I'll put it on the screen if it costs extra. I forgot to see if it costs extra. Honestly, if it doesn't, it's not even that much better. So we'll But matte paint, one thing, I don't think I get the matte paint. Just because matte paint, it doesn't hold up as well and it's harder to take care of. So you have to be more knowledgeable with what you do with the paint when you get a matte paint. And what is matte paint? I always wondered what a matte paint is. Paint finish feels like it kind of feels like the back of the iPhone, like the iPhone 6. I don't know why it's like that. Let's move on to the back of the vehicle, shall we? Now, looking at the back, first and foremost, is you get this spoiler that like sucks in air and it goes down here, so it makes it more aer aerodynamic. And then you also get this third brake light that looks kind of interesting. Maybe let's turn on the brakes and show you guys what the third brake light looks like. Now looking at the back, you get more of these pixel tail lights, and they're just all red, no orange skirt signals. And I think this right here is the see this little line that goes across. That's a light also. It'd be imagine if all of these lit up right here, like that'd be kind of cool. I like how you also get that ionic in white instead of silver, and they put it on this clear part. I think it just makes it a little look a little bit more interesting here. And then you got the same silver trim on the back that you get in the front. Except it doesn't have those vertical lines that you get on the front. I kind of wish they did. Maybe they'll add that in the um, refund, whatever that is. 
And then look at this, H-Track, which means this has all-wheel drive. And if you get all-wheel drive, you get more horsepower, so you're gonna wanna get the H-Track. Down here, just like the front, you get more of those cool lines with the reflectors right here. Honestly, just every little like detail with this car, how they designed it, I think they did a really good job. Like, there's just so many lines all over this vehicle, but it's not open oh done. Let's look at the gas tank. Gas tank, more like EV charging tank. Um, oh, so you probably have to open it with the key. So, I think it's because the car is on it that we can't open it. We'll figure it out later. Honestly, whenever cars have these smart trunks, I can never figure out how to open them. This one has a smart trunk. Well, it's not opening, so obviously it's because... There we go. I guess I don't even know. Sometimes you gotta lock and lock it a few times. All right, so looking at the trunk, let's see what you got. You open up the floor and you have a little bit of storage. Um, you could put like, let's say some, if you have some broccoli in the car and you don't want anybody, you know what I mean, you can hide it right there. But the, and then you get a little pole boat right here. Other than that, there's not really anything else interesting in the trunk. But honestly, this trunk is a little bit big, but I feel like since it has the electric motors under it, it makes the floor go up a little bit. And then since you got the lift back that kind of swoops down a little bit, I feel like the trunk space is a little bit compromised. So it doesn't have the biggest trunk, but it's still big enough. I wouldn't say this is a small trunk, but let's close it. Here's the key fob. It's a nice key fob. I like this key fob. You get a remote start, so if you hold it, well, I think you probably have to press the lock button twice, and then you have to hold it. See, and then it turns on. It doesn't make any sound when it turns on because it's electric. But let's hold it and turn it off because we're not trying to drive yet. Y'all seen how the door handles popped up? They will pop back in when I um, lock it, see? Perfect. Now, this also, you press this, this will open the charger. You got you got so many buttons on this key fob, and then you could press the horn button, and it'll turn the horn. Uh, we're not going to do that, though, because we don't want to annoy everyone. But let's open it up. So you get these little squares in the door handle. What do they do? That's how it unlocks. That's pretty cool. It's only on the front door handles, though. And then if you look in here, if your battery dies, that's where the um, hole is to do the key. And open this up. I was kind of, every time I, this is the first time I've ever been in a car with these door handles. And every time I like saw videos of people open them, I always thought they would feel like they were breaking and pulling them. But this actually feels pretty sturdy, like it's not going to break. So now we're in, let's show you one of the coolest features with the Ion 5 Limited Water. And this is why I think this is probably one of the best new electric vehicles. And it has to do with the seats right here. Look at this. If you press this button, it makes a cushion pop out. Here's my annoyance with it is it's really extremely slow. And then when it does pop out, this is as far as it could go. Honestly, I was saying in the seat, I didn't even really notice the cushion. I wish they would make it lift up a little bit more. Oh, there's a little bit of gray on the seat. I just got it off. Um, what does this button do? It just controls the cushion also. So if you... I don't know why it's not working, but when I was in there, I would press this and it would just move it automatically versus having to hold it down. Um, you can only get this on the limited trim though, and it's not on the passenger side. You do get lumbar on the driver's side, but it's only two way, so you just go up and down. But let's sit in the car and show you guys all the all right, now we're in the Ionic 5, and here's why I really want to review this car for you guys, and why I think this one's really cool. Look, green door panels. It, you can't really see it in this lighting that well, but this is actually green. You get orange stitching right here. It's not a leather, it's just a softer material. And then you get all this ambient lighting here, and you can change the ambient light to a bunch of different colors. You get ambient lights down here on the speakers, which they just turned off, but best believe me, um, you also get a Bose sound system, and I think the Bose sound system comes on either the limited model or the SEL model and above, and honestly, it sounds really good. I, it's what I expect from Bose sound system. I have no complaints from it. And looking at this, this is soft and it goes all the way over here. It's a white look. Oh my God. There's some, there's just a little like black thing on here and then I rubbed it and it went into the white other so that would bother me it looks like this this is a brand new vehicle but you can see 
it looks like the white gets stained really easily and then this is like some recycled um water bottle material and it kind of feels interesting it feels really smooth but it kind of looks dirty but i'm not really complaining about that i think it's supposed to look dirty like you know what i mean see how it's kind of like gray and different colors right here but i think that's just how it's supposed to look i'm not complaining about it i'm gonna go with this interesting texture right here i like how this car has tons of cool textures down here you got a door panel it's a t it's not that big of a storage but that's okay because this car has tons of different places to store you get two cup holders and look you can move this back and forth which i don't know i mean it's cool i don't know what you would need to move it back and forth for i mean i guess maybe so you could be less lazy and you could just put your cup here or if you like i don't know i still think it's cool though you could move it back and forth and you get a wireless charger down in here and then you get two usb ports right here a third usb port right there um you could put something down in here let me try to see how deep this is you could put something down in here down here you got tons of storage for whatever you want to put in here you have tons of storage everywhere open this sorry i'm trying to figure out where the thing is there we go so we are a little bit of storage right here now if you know steering wheel it doesn't have a logo on it what kind of car are we driving this is a mercedes-benz no, I'm just kidding. It's a Hyundai. But mm, it feels pretty nice like a Mercedes-Benz. Not really, but it does feel pretty nice in here. Um, here's the start stop button right here. And this is actually kind of soft material. And it looks like it's green also. Look at that. You got the green on the dashboard with the orange stitching, the jalapeno interior. And that's a good thing. And y'all see this? Look. It's magnetic right here. So if you work at AMC movie theaters... I don't work there anymore, so don't come in expecting to find me. You can put your name tag up there. It was sticking. I don't know why it's not sticking anymore, see? So you can just keep your name tag right there for where you work. Down here, open the trunk with that, and you can turn up and down the lighting with that. Oh, oh my god. I just felt this right here because I was inter interested in what the texture feels like. It's like a really interesting, soft, nice texture. I kind of like this texture. See, this car has tons of cool textures. And you know what else is cool? Is the headlight switch. Let's put it on auto. It's a very nice headlight switch. See? And then you get auto wipers right here. You have to go for the limited trim if you want auto wipers. Honestly, I feel like they should have included it on some lower models. Here are the regenerative braking pedal shifters. Ooh, they feel really nice. See, Hyundai always does some nice stuff with their cars here let's show you guys the drive mode let's turn on the vehicle all the way here's my issue with the gauge cluster i like the gauge clusters in the gasoline um models more i don't like this whole trying let's turn on the let's turn off the air we don't need the air on i don't like this whole like all these lines right here i would rather just be two circles with like a tachometer even if it just says power charge whatever because I feel like, the, I don't know, I'm just not a fan of this. I like the traditional looking gauges more. But if you go through the drive modes, it changes. So Sport makes it a little bit red. Eco makes it look like a book. And then Normal makes it look like a upside down book. Now let's go press all the buttons on the steering wheel and see what it does. Mode, that will just change your music. This, you could set a favorite preset. So it's not like you could do anything. It has specific things you could have as an option. So you can't just be like, oh, my favorite preset, I'm going to make it turn on my heated seats. No, it can only, you can only make it do like, I think it was change between, ch turn off the navigation, change between different media sources, change between different phone sources. And then there's a few more things. There's some cool little things you could do it, but you can't just program it to do like literally whatever. But you can still program it to do a lot of stuff. Now, what's something that's interesting is when you want to change a song, let's say you're listening to music, you have to go down to change the song. If you go up, it goes um, back. Now, let's go through here. Pressing this. So this isn't actually touch capacitive, even though it looks like it. Pressing this goes through the different... Oh, I guess it doesn't. Why isn't it doing it? What the heck? You have to press it literally like exactly on the button right here. So if you go like that, it's not going to do anything. You have to press it exactly on the button. And here's what you could do. It just has those few. I'm going to leave it on here so we can see where the power is going. This is for your Hyundai's Highway Drive Assist 2, 
which comes on standard, I think, on every model except the base model. The base model might even come with it. But it basically just drives for you. It's like level two autonomy driving. It's not going to stop at a stoplight for you, but it'll steer for you and it'll accelerate and slow down for you. Um, cruise control. Look at that. Smart con cruise control conditions not met. And here you can change that. This you change stuff with the cruise control and this is where you could change stuff in the display. So if you press this, you could go through here and change stuff in the display. So every time you press the little things that look like paper and you scroll down it has different little things for each display that's kind of cool let's go look at the infotainment system. oh let's talk about the steering wheel is heated flat bottom two spoke so you don't got a spoke right here drive mode select i think we already talked about it you press it don't twist it and this is really nice quality leather pretty nice let's go through the um infotainment here's my issue with the ionic 5 oh i want to use the heated seats okay well i have to press climate and then i have to press front warmer ventilation and then i have to go like that that's too many steps for heated seats when you could literally just put some buttons like right here for heated and cooled seats granted they'd be kind of small but you can figure out a different place to put them you could put the buttons on the door panel oh and you got driver's seat memory right here um there's different places to put the buttons but they make it where you have to go through a bunch of different menus to get it i don't like that he just needs a standard on every model though at least which is really nice and i think this base model comes with the standard power driver seat so you don't even get manual seats you also get ventilated seats that's really nice. I know the Tesla Model Y, which competes with this, doesn't have ventilated seats. And I forgot, what was the other car? I thought of another car that doesn't have electric seats or ventilated seats that's electric. I feel like electric car companies don't always put um, cooled seats in their vehicles because it makes the range go down a little bit. But honestly, I'd rather have cooled seats. Let's turn it back up because it's a cold day today. Let's show you guys the rest of the um, infotainment system. Do you guys notice this screen is white? You don't really get many white bezel cars. And I think that's cool. Some I remember I was watching some reviews of this car. Some people were complaining that this is a white screen. I'm not complaining about it. Um, so down here, you can press that and you can go to your map. Or you can press this and go to navigation. Or you can press this and go to your media. Um, you got sounds of nature. So you could listen to lively forest when you're driving i don't know who wants to listen to that but it's kind of cool i like how th this car is filled with a little bit of gimmicks but they're actually kind of useful gimmicks it's not like tesla's gimmicks where you, freaking your car makes a fart sound at the horn which i think that's a cool feature but um some of the i just feel like some of tesla's gimmicks are kind of irrelevant like it's kind of like yeah this is cool to show off your friends but whenever you ever going to use this um let's go back though 360 degree camera you could only get that on the top of the line model and get front and rear parking sensors let's go back to the radio though so you can swipe through here you got all these settings you got the climate ev so just like a tesla this will tell you where if you're running low on range this will tell you where to go um let's go through here of course you get navigation and then there's just so much stuff in this infotainment system i really like it i really like hyundai's infotainment system it's really easy to use it has good resolution and it's really um responsive i have no complaints about hyundai's infotainment system actually they actually have one of my the favorite one of my favorite infotainment systems out of any manufacturer the only thing is trying to go change the color of the um whatever these are called the ambient lighting you have to go through a bunch of different menus which is fine but showing you guys right here sometimes it gets a little bit confusing for me trying to find it and what's nice about this is you get tons of different ambient light colors so it's not just like you get 10 you could literally set it to like some random weird little green color but yeah overall with hyundai's infotainment system i think this is really good i don't think they really need to work on anything and I think they should just keep it how it is. They don't really need to mess with it at all. Oh, and here's something you also get is you get Hyundai's digital key, which basically is where you use your phone as a key. 
Um, and it's nice because you don't have to pay a monthly subscription for that. I don't think I was Googling and say you didn't have to. So that's really cool because you know how a lot of cars you could, a lot of cars you can get in the car through a smartphone, but you got to pay a monthly subscription. And who's paying monthly to get, use your phone to get into the car? I'm not. I think that's a waste of money. Let's open up the glove box. Look at the more interesting materials and texture. Oh, this is a really flimsy glove box tray, but that's a huge glove box right there, you guys. That's a really big glove box. EVs have tons of storage. Windows. Power folding mirrors. Boom. Look at that. Doesn't look like they're auto dimming, which Mazda gives you, but mm, this isn't a Mazda. And Mazda doesn't give you half the features that are in this car. Press that to lock it. Press that to unlock it. Um, one touch windows are for the front only. The rear one literally is not one touch, which uh, that actually really annoys me at this price point. Whatever though, Hyundai wants you to get a Genesis. They can't throw you in all the features because they kind of do throw you in all the features. I forgot to talk about this really big sunroof. Boom, huge sunroof in, and you only can get this on the limited trim. So you have to get the highest model to get that. And look at that, it closes from two different ways. Is it gonna smash my fingers? I'm, I was kind of afraid, I, I kind of didn't want to see. Um, and look, you can stop it. So if you only want a crack of light coming through, you can do that. And this is touch sensitive light in the interior and LED lighting is standard on every model. So pretty futuristic vehicle. All right, everyone, here I am in the back. I'm sitting behind myself, but I'm kind of not really actually behind myself because I was kind of messing around with the seat to see how comfortable I could make it. So it's actually pretty far back. I can move it up if I want to, but I'm not going to move it up. Um, my, I'm 6'3 and my knees are touching the seat. This car has plenty of room though. Like I literally have the seat back really far. Like if I was driving, I'd probably move it up. And look, I still have plenty of room and you get a completely flat floor. So whoever's sitting in the middle is not gonna be annoyed. And um, what's interesting, the back is the same materials, the front is the same soft, the same green. But the stitching isn't orange, it's just green. I don't know why they will give you orange stitching in the front, but not in the back. Not that I'm really complaining about that, but it's just something interesting. And look, you still get the ambient lighting in the back. So even though they didn't give you the stitching, they still give you the ambient lighting. Um, more of this interesting woven material. Down here, two USB ports, space to put whatever down there and you can move the center console up so the person can have even more room in the middle. You're like, where are the air vents? They're just on the side there. And here's one, and look, they got a kind of interesting metal trim around them. Let's open them up. Ooh, and this feels nice, this little slider. Here's my issue though with the back seat. Where are the heated rear seats? I thought this vehicle came with heated rear seats. I guess it doesn't, but let's talk about something else. So what's cool about the back seat is you can slide. Look how much for, forward you can slide the seat. Like you, if you don't have enough cargo room in the rear, that is okay because you can just slide the seat all the way for, forward and you can put some stuff behind it. I'm sitting in the back seat and I'm actually really comfy. I'm just reclined in the seat and Got an armrest that flips forward. Let me move the mic so it doesn't smash up the mic. What comes on this armrest? Just two cup holders. That's really it. Nothing really noteworthy there. My issue though, no heated rear seat. You, My friend has a 2011 Hyundai Elantra that has heated rear seats. This is a $60,000 Hyundai electric vehicle that's a 2023 at the top of the line. Why doesn't it have heated rear seats? At least though, they give you the peasant blockers. Now, what is powering? This has a 7.9 kilowatt hour motor powering all four wheels and the four all wheel drive model you only get 266 miles of range. If you get the rear wheel drive model, you'll get 303 miles of range. But you will be sacrificing horsepower. The whole rear wheel drive model has uh, 250 horsepower in the US, and then the all wheel drive model gives you 320 horsepower. So you get more horsepower if you get the all wheel drive model because you get two electric motors in the rear. You also get 450 pound feet torque, so you get a lot of torque with this vehicle. Now, one thing that's interesting is the um, base model of this vehicle 
will give you, I think it's 220 miles of range, and you'll, but you only can get this on the base model, and it'll be rear wheel drive, and get 168 horsepower. 168 horsepower on a vehicle that weighs from around 3,700 pounds to 4,500 pounds, not that much. But this one weighs 4,500 pounds because it's limited and we have dual motor in the rear. So let's get on the road and show you guys how well this thing drives. All right, driving the Hyundai Ioniq 5. Excuse me, sorry. All right, y'all, let's show y'all the zero to 60. Whoa. Woo. I didn't expect that. <laughs> Damn, that's all I can say is damn. That, that really put me in the back of the seat and I was not expecting that at all. I, I mean, I knew it was going, I knew it would be fast and put you back in the seat a little bit, but I wasn't expecting it to be like that. See, that's why electric cars are so fun to drive. Now we got 222 miles. What does this horn sound like? It's just a normal horn. That's what I expected to sound like. Honestly, we don't want to honk the horn a bunch in this area because the, um, there's a lot of homeless out here. This is kind of not the best area because you don't want to draw attention to yourself. So we'll just do that one quiet little honk. Now the brakes do seem to be pretty sensitive. So I touch them and it slows down a lot. Honestly, that's kind of good. We should try out the regenerative braking. Yeah, you do. I bear. I did like I think thirty percent throttle there, and it started to pick up a tiny bit. I'm excited to put this in sport mode to see how it really performs. See, I didn't even have to press the brakes there. I just had it on the regenerative braking mode, and it just slows down for me. That's one thing I really like about EVs is they just slow down for you. Oh, and it tells me if there is somebody in my blind spot up in the heads-up display. So that's really nice. I pedal on. Oh, so this like really slows down for you. So you can, there's a lot of different um, levels to the, damn, that person went flew by me. There's a lot of different levels to this regenerative braking. It seems like the eye mode really slows down for you. I kind of like it with the eye pedal off though, because then it just kind of gradually slows down. Now we're about to get on the highway, so let's put it in sport mode. Make sure nobody's coming. Oh shit. Okay. Sport mode time. Damn. This is the, I, the only other EV I've driven is the Mazda MX-30. <laughs> and this is nothing like the MX-30. This is really fast. That actually really just surprised me there, flooring it. I don't even know if I press it down all the way, but that was a lot of torque. And we went on that turn there and that handled that very well. Granted, I wasn't like making it handle it as the most it could, but it handled it very well. And, it seems like it's pretty fun to drive. Now, they're coming out with the um, Hyundai Ioniq 5N at some point, I'm pretty sure. I think they have that in the works. And I'm really excited for that vehicle because so far driving this, I'm having a lot of fun just from that one little push of torque. And it's a really quiet vehicle and it just feels pretty smooth on the highway. Now, this, you do hear a little bit of a rattle coming from this speaker right here. Maybe it's something up here. Honestly, it's kind of bothering me. I kind of feel like it's missing. And you'll especially notice if you have a rattle if you're in an EV because this has no engine noise. Now let's try out Hyundai's Highway Drive Assist 2. So we probably have to be in normal mode to do that. And when you're in sport mode, when you let off the gas, it doesn't do the regenerative braking like it does in normal mode. Now let's try it out. Um, so to do that, we probably have to press the cruise control and turn it up. How do I set the cruise control? Driving style, adaptive, cruise control. Oh, it says in the head of display, no wonder. Okay, it's not setting it for some reason. That's one thing I don't really, I'm not a big, like I like Hyundai's cruise control, but it's, it's sometimes I get confused trying to set it. It's not like in my Mazda, you just press a button and it goes. This one now, sometimes it'll say smart cruise control conditions not met. Or right now, oh, it's at 73. So let's see if it keeps me there. Okay, now it's working. So we're trying out Hyundai's dr Highway Drive Assist 2. And look at this, you guys. I'm not even touching the steering wheel at all. 
I think it'll change lanes for you too. Let's try it out. So I'm put on my turn signal. And keep hands on the steering wheel. Look at that, you guys. I did not change the lanes. It changed the lanes for me. That's really cool. And it tells me up in the heads of display. This is why it's augmented reality. It does these arrows telling me that it wants to go forward and then or go left to change lane. This, we're going around this curve. This is really cool how it just keeps you going. See, this is what I love about Hyundai's. They have some of the best technology in their cars. How it keeps you in the lane and basically steers for you. I really like that. Now let's put it back into sport mode. We're going 73. Let's pretend we're trying to get around somebody. Yeah, this thing is good pickup on the highway. You know, whatever speed you're going, you will um, have plenty of power. I really like this one. I will go for the all-wheel drive ball just because, you know me, I want as much power as possible. But honestly, this is, I would definitely go, I haven't driven a Tesla, but honestly, I don't think I really need to drive a Tesla to know that I would choose this over a Tesla because this has a few more features. Like, yeah, Tesla's have a lot of features, but I feel like a lot of them are just gimmicks that nobody, like, you don't really need that much. And then this has a, this just seems like it'd be really easy to live with. And, um, I like how you get cooled seats. You can't get that in a Tesla. I think it looks really nice. You get better build quality. That's a huge thing is you get way better build quality. Now, we're going to have to take the exit over here. So let's try to get over. So... Let's see, let's see it try to change lanes. Oh, change lanes for me there, and it kind of cut that person off. But I like that. It's good that I cut that person off because you don't want to have a um, self-changing lane thing that never wants to change lanes because I read that there's, I forgot what other cars, not every car has this lane change features, but some cars have it, and then it won't even change lanes for you because there'll be someone like 250 feet away. I like how this one will change lanes and it'll cut somebody off. This is really cool. It's a really cool feature. It's weird having a car that changes the lanes for you. Oh, and I just realized um, we missed the exit. That's okay. There's one up here that will go down. Okay, so Weird is on a curve, and I have the highway. Oh, well, no wonder. It doesn't have the green steering wheel on. We were on a curve, and I wanted to see if it would turn for me, and it wasn't. Not like we almost went off the, off the road because I was paying attention, and I was preparing for it to do that. But don't be completely taking all your attention off of the road when driving this. Use switch or pedal to accelerate. I don't need to accelerate. There's a car in front of me. Um, but when you're using this, don't be just expecting it to completely take over for you because there will be times when it won't. But I feel like that's kind of a given. If you expect the self-driving to completely take over, then natural stuff. <clears throat> all right, let's figure out the handling for my sport mode obviously I'm not flooring it but going around this turn um yeah you do feel the vehicle lean but once we get in the straightaway we can pass it but we're not doing that because there's cars around us um honestly though the, you feel this vehicle's weight around the turns and it did lean a little bit but it handled it good enough. It didn't, you know, it didn't feel like it's a super sport handling Porsche SUV type electric vehicle, a super sport electric vehicle. But it handled it good enough. Most, it'll be fine for most people. And honestly, it's fine enough for me. I like sharp handling vehicles, but this is fine for me. This thing actually even starts, if you have the um, lane change on and it wants to change lanes for you, it'll actually even start changing lanes for you if you're not ready. I didn't even know that. See, look, this thing is actually really quick because I we started going 84 and I was not even um, wanting to go 84. I just, it was because we were at Sport and I just was all the torque was just like bringing us up to 84. Eco and normal Sport modes, the drive modes really change a lot. Like you really feel the throttle difference between Eco mode and Sport mode. And I like that. Like it almost feels like a completely different car. Like Eco mode, it almost feels like a slow electric vehicle. Unless, of course, you put your foot down. But um, sport mode, you barely put your foot down. It feels like really fast. And I, I like that. 
a lot of cars you switch to drive modes and it barely even changes at all. So we've been driving for a few miles. Um, I floored it like two or three times. And I went a little bit over 90. And honestly, we've only wasted, we started on 93% and now we're on 87%. We were driving on the highway. So it doesn't even seem like this vehicle really wastes much, much electricity. Like I remember when I was driving the Mazda MX-30, well maybe it's because the Mazda MX-30 has less range. But when I drive the Mazda MX-30, it'd be like you put your foot down halfway or anything, like you go about 50 and five, four, three, two, one, your percentages were going like that. This one, it seems like it loses percentage of loss. Um, I think this is a really good vehicle overall. Oh, how much does this car cost? I always forget that. $60,000, which that's a pretty penny. But honestly, this actually comes with a lot of features for that price. And electric vehicles are always expensive. Like, I feel like this is actually the best. And this is top of the line for $60,000. Not $60,000 base price, $60,000 for the top of the line. Honestly, I think that's a really good price considering the range you get, the performance you get, all the features you get, and you get a Hyundai's really long warranty, which I think is like 10 years or 1,000 miles. Oh, do we have the, is this the exit we're supposed to get off of? It looks like we got a funeral procession right there. Let's, let's cut off the funeral part. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Why would I do that? Honestly though, just having the highway drive assist drive for me, I wish my car had this because this is so nice. Like, you're so comfy and I got the ottoman up. I can recline it a little bit. Honestly, if I was to get an electric car, this probably would where I get. Actually, no one because I can't afford it. So I probably have to get like a used electric car or a, um, a Chevy Bolt. But if I could, um, if I had a lot of money, I would definitely, this would be at the top of my list for what I would get. So thank you all for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. Honestly, the throttle and eco mode feels like, you know, in your dreams when you're trying to drive and then you like are trying to get away and you like floor the car and it doesn't like move at all. That's like what it feels like in eco mode. The throttle, it feels like you press the um, gas down and it like doesn't barely want to move at all. Honestly, I don't mind that though. Because really, if you don't want that to happen, just don't drive in eco mode. Just drive in normal or sport mode. But in eco mode, it's nice because you could just be like, if you're like somebody who's tired and you just really want to be like chilling while you're driving, eco mode is the perfect mode for that. And we're in the regenerative braking mode. And you don't even have to press the gas barely or the brakes barely at all. It just stops for you. Overall, though, if I just get an electric car, I mean, granted, I only tested the MX-30 and this one. Um, obviously, this is way better than the MX-30. I would probably get this one. I haven't tested the Kia EV6, but I like how this looks more than the Kia EV6. And I feel like this has a few more features that the Kia EV6 doesn't have.